What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by the Search T channel. AEW Dynamite Homecoming. And it starts off with the third labor of Jericho, Chapter 3. And it's Jericho versus Juventud Guerrera. And Jericho must perform a move off the top rope and win the match. We find out as the match goes on, he can't be going for a pin without having had come off the top rope. And it's going to be tough going against uh, one of the uh, legendary luchadors. Uh, a little side fact that uh, in 1998, these two battled over the Cruiserweight title. And Sturgis in uh, WCW and Jericho lost the title. And Hoovitoot has six matches, you know, one, he's won six matches against Jericho in his lifetime, in his career. Now, the match was so-so, you know, I mean... No, no, no. Looks like Jericho was carrying, uh, you know, Hoovy to uh, enter his match. And uh, in the end, he hits a Jeric the Judas effect, goes for the pin. Up, oh, he can't do it. He's got to go off the top rope, right? So what does he do? He hits a Judas effect off the top rope. Picture perfect. Jericho is 50, 51, and the guy still has it. Still innovating, in he's still innovating in the ring. Innovative. He's still reinventing himself all the time. And he ends up winning the match but he doesn't uh he's not able to uh you know to celebrate as he is attacked by Wardlow. Wardlow takes him out, then he takes out you know Hoovy. And then MGF announces that the fourth labor is a match against Wardlow and the special guest referee is MJF. Jericho is gonna have the cards stacked against him next week. Don't know, I'm thinking the finish is gonna be He's going to knock out uh, MJF, and then he's going to take MJF's hand and count. You'll watch. Isn't that how it always is? It always is. Now, backstage, the Lucha Bros, they still insist on turning down Andrade. Andrade offers uh, to work with them. You know, they can get limousines, they can have lobster, caviar, whatever, right? But they still refuse, and why not? And, of course, uh... Uh, Pac is still late. His travel is delayed. Something happened with his travel. This seems like they're messing around with it so that they can keep him separated from the Lucha Bros. You know? And then we see the Dark Order and Hangman part ways for now. Even uh, Ivoruno said, hey man, don't, don't go to him, Hangman. This is what he wants. Let him take his time to air out whatever he needs to air out. But they're still friends, but they have to part for now. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Now, 2.0, they make their debut against John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, and Darby Allen. Now, these guys were formerly known as Everrise in uh, WWE and NXT, and they really were coming into their own as characters. But they got released, and uh, now they, find, they may find themselves ever losing, starting with this match. In the end, Coffin Drop. And it ends 2.0 in their partner's hopes of uh, establishing themselves as the dominant team. They called out Eddie Kingston, Mox, and uh, Darby, Darby Allen. Uh, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Go to the top. Try to go to the top right away like that and call out these three. But it didn't work out for them. But hopefully they'll do something with these guys because they're very talented. Uh, 2.0, formerly uh, known as Everrise. They really are talented. They really... Uh, have a really good uh, way of, uh, of, of you know, cutting the promos, you know, you know, talking on the mic, you know, they really got some a lot of energy. So, hopefully, they do something with them. Maybe put somebody with them, a, a manager. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they, they they need to give these guys a chance because they do have uh, something there. They really do. Now, Team Taz, blah blah blah. Brian Cage didn't need Taz or the FTW the FTW title. He was there before Taz um, even uh, hooked up with him. And it's like, yeah, he doesn't need them. Like, I said that too. And then Taz is all saying, oh, you better be, uh, you better, like, what's the word? But it's just, in, in, to kind of uh, paraphrase, he said, uh, uh, be careful what you wish for kind of thing. You know, oh, you know, it's going to get worse from here or something like that. I'm just like going, no, nah, he's better off. Your son, who's still training or still hasn't even seen him wrestle in the ring. Well, maybe he wrestled on Dark, I don't know. I don't watch Dark. And then Hobbs. 
that fucking tries to, that's how that's how he tries to look tough and mean. Then you have uh, Starks. For one moment, tries to um, act feminine. You know, that's how I think I guess he needed uh, his character to be charismatic, so he started talking with a lisp. You know, and then now he's talking like a a, a man now. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, they don't impress me. None of them. He got great wrestling ability. I'm not gonna take that away from him, but it's just there's just something about him that I just, you know, it's all Brian Cage. It's about Brian Cage, and that's who I'm gonna focus on and watch him. You know, he doesn't need them. He really doesn't. And the elite, they have a backstage segment. Who fucking cares? I know I don't. I skipped it. I don't care. Now Christian Cage, who is uh, seven and zero his debut, takes on the Blade. The bunny is quickly taken out of the equation as a legit Layla Hirsch, who's going to be her opponent later on in that number one contender match for the NWA Women's Title, fights her to the backstage. In the end, Christian Spears, uh, the Blade, who tried to introduce the Brass Knucks, that's his like his crutch, his go-to, and now he stands at eight no, and is you see the number one contender to the world title. Well, it's confirmed later on in the program that he is the new number one contender, and uh, Cage pretty much says that uh, he's pa he's not back for the pats on the back, looking for the peeps in the crowd. He's back for titles because seven years ago he had the he had his world title taken away from him, and just like his partner Edge is on WWE, that's what they want. They want to be able to get their world title back, and I hope that he's the one that does take it away from Kenny Omega. It's really. Anybody really, but it'd be great if if Cage was able to do that. That'd be great. Now, Santana and Ortiz, they left Cash Wheeler in a pool of blood after the tag team match. Harwood is now looking for payback, and Ortiz proclaims it is far from over. Because uh, you know, because I do remember when I, after the, you know during that match, you see um, you know see Cash um, holding his arm and he's bleeding, and they showed what happened. He, you know, when he got knocked over the turnbuckle to the ground they saw they showed his arm pinched like this like it was it looked like it was like that and it actually it was the uh, the hook you know caught onto his arm and ripped his arm you know ripped it up here you know what I mean and it looked it looked brutal and it looked it looked really like sick sickening like oh yeah you know what I mean like uh, and it's like you know I wish the best for him and hopefully he recovers and he's able to uh, you know he won't be away too long you know but now, um, you know, Harwood, old Dax there is uh, pissed. <laughs> He's looking to, cause that's like his brother, man. These guys are guys that will go go way back to uh, WWE, you know, when they were the uh, revival. So they they've been together for a while, and they consider each other brothers. They're very close like that. So. You know, he's gonna look to you know. I think Santa Santa Ortiz. You know, they they may have waken up a sleeping sleeping tiger. You know, a sleeping bear, if you will, because uh, Harwood can go uh, even as a single single superstar. He can go. So hopefully, uh, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen. How he's gonna go about? It. He's gonna take him on one by one. He's gonna take him on a one on two handicap match. And yeah, we'll see. Now, Tony Schiavone's in the ring with the women's champ, uh, Britt Baker, DMD. And Red Velvet interrupts it was the proceedings. Uh, she uh, says that she's 22 and four with seven straight wins, and well, she didn't have to cheat. You know, a real dig at uh, the champ, and uh, she wants a shot as the champ, and the champ accepts. And a at AEW's uh, Rampage, their debut in Pittsburgh, PA, where it's the hometown of uh, Britt Baker, uh, she that's where the play match is gonna take place. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Red Velvet really is uh, something to watch in the ring. She really has come along a long way, and she's really done really well in the ring, especially against uh, Jade Cargo. So we'll see what uh, takes place when uh, that match uh, kicks off. Now El Fuego del Sol thinks he's working for Andrade. Uh, Chavo brings him there and says, "Hey, look who I got! We didn't get the Lucha Bros, but we got him." And he ends up telling him that uh, you're gonna shine Andrade's shoes, and then when he ex is trying to tell Chavo, hey man, this is not what you told me I was going to do. Andrade lays a beat down and makes him uh, pretty much uh, shine his shoes with his uh, tongue. I mean, he had his face down there. And I'm like going, you know. So apparently he's not on, on uh, Andrade's uh, payroll. <laughs> so uh, that's that. Now, uh, Hangman, he talks to Tony in the ring. 
and the elite interrupt, but Paige has something to say to the Bucks. I like Hangman, so I will, so I will try and get through this. That's pretty much what I did. It's just like I don't want to watch them, but when they're talking to Hangman, I want to know what he has to say. But then Hangman gets beat down. The Dark Order goes out there, but um, Evil Uno and he's holding him back, and Kazarian, the Elite Hunter, goes in there to get him some, and then he gets taken care of. And uh, they lay him out, the uh, Hangman. They hit him with the V trigger. They hit him with the, uh, you know, with that double knee from the uh, Bucks. So uh, what's going to happen? You know, it's, um, he's not going. Doesn't have a world title shot. He's not the number one contender anymore. So pretty much, it's like that's it. They're done with him. They even called him a loser. On the King Omega can't call him a loser. The Buck doesn't have time for losers. You know, kind of thing. Um, that's that segment, and I swear that I, I don't care. I don't like the books. I don't like Kenny Omega. I don't like any of them. It's just that they're just corny. They're hokey. They're they're like, trying to be flamboyant, uh, over the top of heels, and it doesn't work. They can't act for shit. They can't cut promos for shit. I don't care. I really don't. And people that like them, whatever, knock yourself out if you like them. I'm not going to say people that like, like them are stupid, yeah, but I don't like them. I just don't. That's me. Now, uh, Dan Lambert, I guess that's his name. He's uh, America's top team. He's the what's that? The CEO, the manager, the boss, whatever of that. And he got taken out with the, um, probably, uh, by the murder hawk, but with the blackout. And he insists that he's going to still get his uh, whatever out. Because he's, he has some things that he's trying to expose AEW, so he has more to say. And when he comes, when he comes next week, uh, he's gonna have backup. Uh, so, backup? What backup? You honestly think that any kind of backup is gonna be enough to take out the IWGP US title, US champion? You know, the dude's psychotic. The guy will take on a whole security force. The guy will take on a whole faction. You know what I mean? And then this guy is just like, he's a non-wrestler, like a guy that's, like we're supposed to be like, oh, ooh, I wonder who, ooh, well, who's it going to be? I mean, they might saddle him with uh, another person that's coming, you know, over and signed to WWE, I mean, to AEW, you know saying? Now, the TNT title match is Miro versus Lee Johnson, and um, what do you expect but uh, Miro dominating? Now, Lee Johnson, well, you know, he did uh, get in some offense and uh, had some earfalls. But uh, with a sidekick and a an accolade submission, and Johnson is out, and Miro retains, so, uh, you know. I don't even think Lee Johnson attacked, right? I think he just passed out. What do they call his name? It's not the accolade no more, right? The, the submission? But uh, he successfully demands the title. I want Miro to uh, defend, defend it against uh, some uh, top-tier talent. Lee Johnson is a guy who is rising in the ranks, and he's very good in the ring, he is, but, you know, come on, put him in a better program, put him with somebody, one of the top tier guys, and, 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 and uh, what do you call it, you know, because uh, he deserves it, he deserves to be competing against uh, guys who are his uh, level, and kind of make the match a little bit better, you know, instead of just, <clears throat> this was on the squash, but it was uh, close to it. But so let's you know let's let's do something with that. Come on, guys. Yeah. Now the Bunny versus uh, legit Layla Hirsch to see who will be the next contender to the NWA Women's World Champion and the Women's Champ Camille. Uh, she's in the audience and she has a stare down with the Bunny. Apparently, she was going to defend it against uh, the former champ Serena Deeb, but Serena Deeb had to have surgery. She didn't make it. So uh, so let's see what happens and. Uh, the match was uh was it was, was a good match. I liked it. It was fun. I like seeing what Layla Hurst did. I even seen like the bunny. The bunny is very deceptive. Sometimes people think that she's just a, a valet, and she sneaks somebody that she, she's capable in the ring. She's a little she's okay in the ring. No, she's actually good when she when she sets her mind to it and to put on a great match. And she's good. The last few matches I've watched with her, she even had a, a AEW uh, Women's World Championship match before, and she's really good. Uh, but in the end, uh, the diminutive uh, four foot eleven uh, Layla Hirsch, uh, she ends up uh, locking in an armbar, and she taps out the bunny really quick. Bunny was like, 
you know, I mean, her, her hands were fluttering like a damn, uh, what do you call it, like a, uh, what do you call that, a hummingbird. And then Layla summons the champ into the ring, and boy, the height and the size advantage, the di I mean, the, yeah, the, the champ has a difference between the two. It's like uh, David and Goliath, or, uh, you know, how can you say it in female words, you know. <laughs> but David and Goliath, kind of the female version of it, and uh, let's see what uh, Layla Hirsch has to offer and what kind of a uh, you know battle plan she has going into uh, that match when she goes over to the NWA territory and takes on Camille. Now Jade Cargill in her rep explains that she was busy. Hollywood, all these uh you know different types of uh you know product endorsements like you see her talking about and stuff like that. But she's back and uh, she's gonna compete on Dark Elevation. They're saying, oh, the perfect uh, word for that, elevation, because the elevation of Jay Cargo. I mean, she's been away a while, a bit. You know, it's like they're building her up, and she's been pretty impressive in her matches. So, come on. She's green still, too, so she has to have more in-ring thing. You know, in-ring uh, experience and in-ring uh, appearances, you know. Now, let's go to the main event, and it's Molokai Black versus Cody Rhodes. And, uh... Comes in the ring, he looks like Skeletor turned up a thousand with his in ring uh, entrance gear. In his ring entrance gear, you know, looking impressive, already making a uh, an impression. And then Black, you know, he already possesses the aura of a man who will mentally and physically destroy you. And he dies, he's been that he's he, in this match, he's like dissecting Cody physically, and he lays in a kick that sends Cody over the ropes and through the uh table there through it destroying the table and uh cody beats the count and then after a little bit of a skirmish he eats a spinning back kick black mass as it was called in wwe don't know what it's called in aew and he lays out cody and places his foot on cody the steps on his chest and the count of three is administered by the ref and that's it and then tony gets to interview cody i'm going shimani man why are you interviewing him the guy practically got knocked out but then Cody is talking and he's talking about legacy is a funny thing you know he got into wrestling when he was 15 he became a referee first and everything that he went through talking about WWE and all that stuff and it's like he's talking about like he's stepping away you know like this is his last match and he even reminisces about the journey to AEW beating the Bucks beating Omega of course everybody laughing at them when they said that they were going to cause a revelation a uh, revolution I should say and for AEW and three years now and they're in his words you know this isn't the alternative this is competition this is the competition and there's no better place than here and no better time to say it and people are going uh oh even the commentators you know uh, Cody is about to leave his boots in the ring and according to Tony Giovanni that's how the old timers that's how they used to do it they would leave their boots in the ring when they're going to announce they're going to retire but then what happens he's attacked by uh, Aleister Black and it looks like Cody Cody Rhodes has been retired, but retired by Al, uh, Malachi Black. I'm telling you, Malachi Black is AEW's future, and this guy is a beast in that ring. He he totally he just he did not even give Cody any room to breathe. Cody got in some stuff. He tried to uh. Get him in the uh, crossroads. He tried to do these other things, but when you get hit with those kicks and Cody's uh, leg, he's having some problems and issues with his leg because he was getting his leg worked on with submissions, kicks. That kick that he did when he sent Cody through the table, it was just a simple snap, fronting, snapping front kick. And he he, he, he laid him out and sent him in the air, through the air, and he right through the table. He comes in and then boom, he eats a damn... Uh, spinning back kick there's no stopping him and I'm just thinking that uh, if he's going to go after a champion the champion right now on, on either both singles titles are heels so is he going to continue to pile up the victories probably he's going to end up doing that they're going to build him up to be even more stronger and then whomever gets the championship let's say Chris, uh, you know, Christian becomes the champion let's say right Malachi Black will take him out, take the title from him, and then he's going to have a long-ass reign for that title. You know, imagine him going to Japan, going to Impact, 
Yeah, going to NWA maybe too. Now that he's with the AEW, they got an open relationship with them. I mean, a uh, working relationship with these uh, companies. He can, he may he may do what Kenny's doing now and having all the belts, all the golds. Man, he is amazing. Been a fan of his since since the NXT days, since main roster. Even though they 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 kind of uh, WWE, I'm talking about, kind of uh, did him dirty and stuff but I still was uh, impressed with what he does in the ring he still was able to you know to get some stuff out there to get his uh, you know move set out there and, and do what he does but they didn't allow him to do what he wanted to do he was doing the father uh, the dark father thing and then he gets released so uh, to me he's where he needs to be where he can be free to do to be himself and to be able to do what he wants to do. And all, all I'm saying before I end this video is that everybody else better have their heads on a swivel and they better watch out because Malachi Black isn't going to, you know, he's, he's not going to give any kind of mercy to anybody. He's definitely going to take everybody out in route to becoming the world champion. I'm pretty sure that's where he's going to be going. That's his goal right now. I mean, his goal, eventually. Right now, he's looking to kick everybody's ass and knock everybody out like, like damn dominoes. Just have them fucking fall one after the other. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed uh, Homecoming back at Daly's Place. Uh, very, very good show. Uh, AEW is just continuing to knock it out. And they're continuing to just, like Cody says, they're not the alternative. They're continuing to prove that they are the competition. And if these people, these other companies don't watch it, they're going to be the top uh, promotion. I know. It'll, be take, it'll take something to go take out WWE. But uh, if anybody can, they keep making the right moves. I think AEW can do that. But that's kind of like way far into the, you know, into the distance, you know. So we'll see what happens with that and how they continue to book their superstars and the wrestlers and how they continue to line up these pay-per-views and these special shows on uh, the AEW Dynamite. But uh, anyway, uh, that's my video. And uh, for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And in closing, as always, take care.